Hey, it's Wit, and in this video I'm going to show you my exact process of how I planned out my first Saddle Solar 1000 ride, which means riding 1000 miles, a little bit over, in a 24 hour time period or less. So I received my Saddle Solar 1000 certificate along with the Ride 1K in a day, but if you are new to this channel make sure you subscribe below and then any of the links that I mentioned in this video will be in the description box as well. Well, so let's get into it. So I want to make this planning process as smooth as possible for you because I know for some it's kind of like the thorn in the side. It's, they don't really want to do it, but it's going to benefit you. So when you actually are able to start your ride and complete it, all you have to think about is riding it and not any of the other variables. So first things first, I want you to find a spot or a destination that motivates you. And for me, looking through the Iron Butt Association, I know they have the Great Lake series. Being that close to Lake Michigan, it was almost a no-brainer for me. I was like, yes, I have to, I have to at least start this series. Um, and I always wanted to ride across the Mackinac Bridge, and that was just, you know, the icing on the cake for my sake. So done and done. That's the one I was going to start with and that's the one I completed. But for you, find something that motivates you. Whether it's, you know, a barbecue joint 500 miles away that you have to go there to enjoy lunch and come back or if it's, you know, following the um, outline of your state. Whatever it may be, there's a ton of different themes and ideas um, not only on the Iron Butt Association or if you would just want to keep it simple, find a direct route for 500 miles and turn back around or even if it's a longer distance going from start or from point a to point b and that's your thousand miles go for it so i just recommend you find something that keeps that motivation going throughout the entire ride because there is going to be a point where you're like why am i doing this like can i just stop can it be done um and that's going to continuously help you propel you forward for it okay now let's get into the logistics of planning this is the fun part for me so figure out what bike you are most comfortable on to complete this ride for me my recommendation is the one that's in your garage that you've been riding all season absolutely perfect then figure out the maximum mileage that your bike can hold. Keep in mind that the Iron Butt Association does require you to have some sort of documentation every 350 miles or less. So for me, I completed my first Saddle Star 1000 on a 2003 Harley Davidson Sportster 883, which meant my little peanut tank could only hold eh, 125 miles max probably on a good day. So when I started to create my route, I mapped out my stops to be about 100 miles or less because I didn't wanna be in dire need of a gas station and there was no gas station inside. So if you can undershoot that mileage just a little bit, instead of having to push it pretty much all the way to empty, that would be ideal. So figure out your max mileage and then minus probably about 10 miles, 50 miles, 20 miles, if you feel comfortable. For me, it was 100, <laughs> and we went with that. All right, next step is to actually plan out your route on a map. So the Iron Bed Association recommends that you use Google Maps. Guys, it's free, there's no cost to it. It's kind of a no-brainer. So I am going to take this camera and flip it around, show you my computer screen instead because it's just, easier to walk you through it that way. So let's get you on the screen. <laughs> There's two different ways that you can go about recording and planning your route on Google. There is the uh, maps.google.com, which is what I'm on right now, or there is the mymaps.google.com. So this is associated with the uh, Google account that you have already created. You can see I've got some of these planned out already, but you'll go in and create a new map in here for my maps. I like using this because there's multiple reasons. For these, you're only allowed 10 different stops and that's it. That's where you kind of max out with. So if your fuel mileage range is less than that, then maybe that works. Uh, 
I would just say save this to an email or send it to your phone often because once you click out of here, you lose all of that information, all that work that you've done unless you copy the long URL or I think if you go into details here, you can create a small link to share. But if you don't, you're kind of SOL and you have to start over from fresh. For here, all the changes are saved in the drive automatically. So it just, I don't know, it makes it easier if this is going to be a process to do and you want to have your work saved. So you'll go in once you create your map and click add directions. And then remove this layer delete it. This is where generally you'll choose a route by adding certain checkpoints. I recommend that you start in the cities along the roads that you know you want to take and keep choosing them until either your route is at, you know, 1,000 miles one way or 500 miles and back or like I'm doing a loop, you have to have your kind of like corners and your checkpoints mapped out. I know it's going to be some trial and error to figure out, you know, the best, most efficient stops along the route, but it's going to be worth it. So this is where I take, I'm going to go back into um, my actual, whoops, my actual route that I created. We're going to just delete this one, open up my exact link. You can see this document in the YouTube description too, if you really want to know, but I found the states, or not the states, I found the cities that I knew were going to accommodate my fuel mileage range and then I took it a step further and actually found the exact gas station addresses that I wanted to be stopped at. So you can see all of the actual addresses of them all. If you know and you're familiar with the route before, then these gas stations might be pretty easy for you to find and plug in. If not, I recommend, you know, opening up an additional tab and just searching um, quick trips in Ashwabanon. I had it. There we go. And it'll pull up the general area and you know I'm going off of 41 and it's going to be on this side of the road as I'm coming back down. This quick trip right here is going to be absolutely perfect for me. So I'll go in and take that exact address and plug it in to that city that you had put in before. So you can kind of see based off of like my maps right here, go in and plug in those addresses instead so you can go in and edit them and change them out and just in my maps it's easy because it's automatically saved and you don't have to keep going back in and out but um, <laughs> if that makes any sense so once you've got those exact addresses it just makes things so much easier but like I said make sure they are open 24 hours because there is a point in time really up in the high part of Michigan that this gas station stop was only open until 11 p.m. So I knew I had to make it there before before then. Um, but just make sure if you can find something that is 24 hours, that would be ideal. And make sure you don't undercut your total mileage. This is a really big one and the Iron Butt Association asks that you create a route that's more than the thousand miles. And I'm not saying just by like a mile or two, I would do at least 50 miles or over. You can't depend on the odometer and some of the bikes that may, some of the bikes may record more miles than what you've actually traveled. Some is up to like 40 extra miles I read, or it'll even undercut. In my case, I had my mileage planned out to be 1,018 miles, but my odometer actually read 1,012 miles. So keep that in mind and always make sure your ride is over that 1,000 mile mark. So after you feel 100% complete with your planned route, um, make sure that you're sending this to yourself. In my maps account, you've got it saved already, but like I had mentioned um, just before this, make sure you're copying that final URL and sending it either to an email or having your link saved somewhere so that way you're not missing and losing your work. Doing best, I think, is um, 
of both. So if you've, it's easy to create both if you've got less than um, 10 stops here. Just saving your work and having that somewhere will be very beneficial. Okay, so once you have all of your exact gas station addresses planned out, it's time to take it just a little bit further and figure out the timing of your route. I have read that the very early morning is the best time to start your ride. So that could be three, four o'clock in the morning. And I know some of you who maybe work night shift or your body just does well at night, you can um, adjust it for it but riding in the most daylight just makes the most sense. <laughs> so I pulled the detailed information from my Google Maps and pasted it into this Excel document. If you want this for yourself, I am happy to provide that to you. Just let me know your email in that description box. All you have to do is sign up for it. I will send you over not only this Excel document that you can save to the Google Drive, but also just a blank generic PDF if you want to just handwrite things out instead of using an Excel document. But the easiest way is just to go to your um, My Maps account and it, it'll look like this once you pull up your route. Figuring out the um, detailed information, all you have to do is click this three little button here, click on step-by-step -step directions, and it will show you a kind of turn-by-turn -turn navigation. So your first stop is your starting point, and then right underneath it, you'll see the mileage and the amount of hours it's going to, or minutes it's gonna take you to get to that next stop. So if I scroll down here, this is my second stop. In Sun Prairie, it's gonna take me 49 miles and 51 minutes. After that, just keep scrolling down to get all of that detailed information. So pulling up your Excel document again, you know your exact gas station stop. Um, first, but that distance is going to take you to get to the next one. What did I say? It was 472.8, and then it's going to take me an hour and 12 minutes. And then the next stop was going to be 49.3, and it's going to take me 51 minutes. So this will automatically calculate your current mileage of what you're at. So as you plug in your numbers here in the distance, it will show you that total mileage along with what each stop you're going to be at. So once you put in that, I'm gonna go over to the second tab that I'll provide to you too. This is my example for my saddle store. So be generous with your brakes. Um, I guess if you want to end at a certain time, I recommend starting at the bottom of the worksheet and working your way back up. So say if you want to arrive before 12 o'clock p.m. Um, oh my gosh, if I could finish that. Then just work your way backwards. But for me, I knew I had to, I couldn't leave until 7.45 a.m. So I started my arrival time or my start time with that as the basis to go off of. So then once you've pulled your time allowed, it's going to take you, you'll know that arrival time for ideally if there's no traffic or accidents or things that may happen. I know it's going to take me to 9 a.m. to get to that next location. Then here's where you add either your 10 minute or 15 minute break or if you want to do longer or shorter, you can kind of see my notes in here. And then I put in the time I need to leave that gas station for that next stop. So I know I need to leave by 9.15 a.m. because it's going to take me um, 51 minutes to get to that next location. And so generally I might be pretty lenient on this. If I do just a 10 minute break, it'll be perfect. I'll get there at 10 a.m. But at least give yourself an adequate enough amount of time even if you are really super proficient at your stops, um, at actually filling up the pump, say it takes you five minutes, I still recommend giving yourself a buffer. And then just fill out the remaining portion of the sheet, including the um, gas station operating hours. I highlighted some of these, so just to make note, like that was my longest mileage stop, just to know, hey, keep tabs on how you're... <laughs> how quickly you're going if you're going through fuel a lot just to know that that was one 
my longer stops and then also one of my gas stations was closed at 11 p.m so i highlighted those in a red color and so walk through it hopefully this gives you a good basis to go off of and i'm going to give you my example so at least you've got eh, something to fill out but this should help you be really super um, nerdy when it comes to your actual route and you can print this off and put it into your saddle bags or your um, wherever you want to hold on to it and kind of keeps your checkpoint to know okay i'm at this I'm at 50 or 522 miles now and then I'm at 700 so I'm um, three quarters of the way through or whatever it may be it's just a nice reference to have all right so that's it I know it seems really simple for the video but the most time that you guys are gonna have to commit is actually planning out the route and I know it's gonna be a little bit of a daunting task and time-consuming to do so but trust me when I say the more prepared you are in planning out your route the easier that it's gonna be to complete your iron butt ride the less things you're gonna have to worry about and the more you can actually just go out and enjoy it so I am here if you need any clarification at all, any questions that you wanna shoot my way, make sure to leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to help share my answers and also any seasoned long distance writers, cause I know you're watching this too. If you have any tips and tricks, leave them in the comments below because I know these viewers are going to find it very beneficial for the feedback that you provide as well. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful at all, make sure to hit that like button. So the little thumbs up button right below this video, go ahead and click that because I appreciate it. And we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.